schedule. Randy Johnson with a win tonight would win his 10th game of the year. He would be halfway to the 20 win mark, something no Seattle Mariner pitcher has ever done in the young history of the Seattle ball club. So Randy Johnson would like to win 20 games. He would also like to win a division championship. But it's going to be tough for Ken Griffey Jr. will be out another four plus weeks with that fractured wrist. The ball game begins good live fastball to Devon White. Well, you see Devon White's average is 291. He's had a good road trip here on the West Coast hitting 300. Well, this guy can really fly. Devon White, 291 average, eight home runs, 35 runs batted in, and the big unit gets ahead in the count. Overpowering fastball from Randy Johnson, both a four seam and a two seam, and he has that devastating slider. And the count now one ball, two strikes. Devon White had a rough night last night, went 0 for 5 against Chris Bazio, Steve Fry, and Bob Wells in the second game of the series. That's a foul ball. No, they're waiting for it, but nobody called foul ball at all. Randy now Johnson Luke saying way fair. Out. Now, finally, the first base umpire, Gary Cedarstrom, with his arms outstretched. Pennell is going to say, wait a minute, that didn't hit anything. Now, he's going to go argue with Cedarstrom because Cedarstrom basically bailed out Jim Joyce at home plate. I called the ball foul. And earlier this year, Lou Pinella and Jim Joyce had one of the great rhubarbs of the year during one of the Mariner road trips. I believe it was in Baltimore. They went nose to nose and toe to toe for about five minutes. See if there's contact there and hit the bat and it looked like it hit him on the shin. Went straight out in front of home plate. Pinella's arguing that that just was a little jam shot that stayed in play. Obviously, when you hit Devon White in the banish box, it's a dead ball. You can see the two or three days growth of beard on Lou Pinella's face. That's what happens when your ball club doesn't score any runs. Lou's really, really trying to put together a consistent lineup, of course, when your superstar is out, Ken Griffey Jr. It's tough to do that. The Mariners have used almost 40 different lineups this year trying to find a way to put together a combination that will click for them. So far, they're hanging in. There's the first slider of the game from Randy, and he missed with it. Two balls, two strikes to Devon White. That's foul back. If you had to vote today for the Cy Young Award, would you give your vote to Randy Johnson? Yes, because he's so dominant. Nine and one. Leads the league in strikeouts. He's great innings eater. He'll eat up a lot of innings for you. Devon White hasn't had much success at all against Johnson, and that's the reason why. You just can't chase that high fastball, but with two strikes, you've got to protect the strike zone. First strike out for the big unit. We asked him before the game, Randy, are you the best pitcher in baseball today? Uh, there's a lot of great pitchers. I think uh, Greg Maddox is uh, probably the the best pitcher in all of baseball. Uh, you know, I, may, I might be the most dominating, and the only reason I'm using that word is because that's a word that's being used now. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm the best pitcher because I don't feel I am. I think Greg Max is probably the best pitcher in baseball. He has been the last three years. I would like to think I'm one of the best pitchers in the American League, though. And he's facing one of the best hitters in the American League, Paul Molitor here. Well, you talk to hitters, and they'll tell you he's <laughs> one of the best pitchers in the American League. He's just wild enough to keep you loose up there, too, is the big unit. And there's an example. Two balls, no strikes. You know, hitters talk about comfort levels. And Randy Johnson never affords you to get comfortable just because he's a bit wild, throws so hard, and he's got that wicked slider. You know, it's difficult to find a release point from Randy Johnson. He throws three quarters, and there's a lot of arms and legs going on, and you've got to try to hunt for that ball where it's coming from. Two balls, no strikes. That's out of play, two and one. Big crowd tonight, biggest of the series. Well over 30,000, they predict, here at the Kingdom. They've got a big giveaway. It's a Ken Griffey Jr. T-shirt night. And it's always a big crowd when the Toronto Blue Jays come to town. Folks from British Columbia make the trip down to Seattle. Good fastball there. It's tough, two and two. Well, there are a lot of hitters that will tell you Randy Johnson can get by with the fastball. He can throw two-seam fastball, four-seam fastball, and probably get a lot of strikeouts. Foul back to the screen. 
Molitor is one of the best fastball hitters in all of baseball, or has been for the last several years. He had a slow start this year, but just now start, starting to break out of it a bit. He had four hits last night. Three doubles. Three doubles, scored a couple of times. He can flat out play. It's hard to believe he's approaching 40 years of age. That'll scatter his teammates in the dugout. Might need to take out a little liability insurance in that Toronto dugout on this night. Be a lot of late swings tonight here at the Kingdom. Yeah, there won't be anybody <laughs> dropping their head when right-handed hitters are up there against Randy Johnson. You know, Johnson's the type of guy that will have the other team on the bench all night long because he can dominate a game. You know, there's always a chance maybe he's going to pitch a no-hitter. Strikeout 20. Breaking ball, bouncing ball to short. Luis Soho, a former Blue Jay, gobbles it up, throws him out. Two straight, retired by the big unit here in the top of the first, and Robbie Alomar will be the batter. Second baseman, number 12, Roberto Alomar. Boy, he's had a rough month of July. Think about the situation up at the Sky Dome in Toronto. The continued trade rumors that are swirling around his name as the trading deadline approaches July 31st. One ball, no strikes. You know, Chip, it was probably a good situation if that incident did happen, that it happened on the last day of the homestand, and they went on a long, long right. road trip. Overpowering heat there, one and one. You talk about a long road trip, Blue Jays travel over 5,200 miles on this long road trip. Another game here in Seattle tomorrow, then it's off to Minnesota for a couple of games, then back to Skydome. Breaking ball, misses low. Two balls and a strike. Robbie Alomar, ninth in the circuit and hitting at 324. Ten home runs, 40 runs battered in. He's had an awesome road trip, hitting 417. And is 15 for his last 30. Late swing there into the upper deck. And a fine catch by one of the fans in the third deck, brought along the mitt. And a count of two and two. Randy Johnson, as we've said, is an overpowering pitcher. Sometimes your defense behind you will get a little restless because Randy can pretty much play catch all by himself if he strikes out 10, 12 hitters in a ball game. And defensively in this series, the Mariners have left a lot to be desired. So they'd better be shot. Strike three call inside court. A blazing fastball ties up Robbie Alomar. Three up, three down for Toronto in the first. We go to the bottom half. Here we go. Toronto nothing. Seattle coming up. Randy Johnson struck out two Blue Jays in the top of the first. Here in the bottom half, the Mariners will come up. Here's a look at Lou Pinella's starting lineup brought to you by Budweiser. Boy, a big gaping hole in the middle of that order without Ken Griffey Jr. And as we told you, Luke Pinello's used over 30 different lineups this season to try to compensate. Well, he's trying to generate some offense. Big plus for this team this year has been 61 steals, third in the American League. Let's look at the Blue Jays defensively. You see Gonzalez at third base. This is his first start at third. Sprague moves from third to first base for his first start of the year. Cito Gaston wants to start all right-handed batters against Randy Johnson. And there's Pat Henkin. Six and six, a 5.86 ERA, and Joey Cora lines it foul down the left field line. Cora, not really a leadoff hitter, but he's been pressed into service in that role this year for the Mariner Ball Club. Rich Amaral has led off some. Alex Diaz has led off some for this team. Cora, a little switch hitting second baseman, used to play with the White Sox. Evens the count at a ball and a strike. Henkin wants a new baseball. He has been very, very lucky in that. He gets a lot of runs to work with. Jays score almost eight a game for him. That's the second most in the American League. He gives up a lot of home runs, always has. 27 two years ago, 21 last year, and already this season he's given up 15. And a base hit for Joey Cora leading it off. So he's a threat to steal the leadoff man aboard, and Luis Soho, the shortstop, will stand in. The Mariners have lost seven of their last nine games. They've fallen three games under the 500 mark. They're seven games out of first place behind the California Angels. And they've really, Buck, started to struggle here at home, and that's not like the Seattle Mariners. They've always played pretty good baseball at the Kingdome, but they have lost 11 of their last 18 here. 
Now this year they're a pretty good speed ball club. They can play hit and run. They can steal bases, go first to third. Soho is a good handler of the bat. He can play hit and run with got good speed and core at first base. Here's a guy that's done a good job for Lou Pinella. Playing every day since Fermin has gone down and he has a little more range than you might expect. He's got a very strong arm. He's just biding his time for the Mariners' young phenom shortstop Alex Rodriguez hitting 380 in AAA. A strike called to Soho. One ball, one strike. Key to Pat Henkin's success is getting the curveball over early in the ball game. That keeps the hitters off that fastball. He throws a fastball that he'll use up on top of the strike zone. He's a high fastball pitcher. That's why he gives up so many home runs. Pat Hinkin last time out, one on July 9th at Oakland. No walks, only one earned run. It's a home run. And five hits. He's won his last two outings, and that's encouraging for this Toronto ball club because starting pitching really has been a big, big problem. Not so in this series, however. Oh, tries to get out of the way. He did not swing, says Gary Cedarstrop. Two balls and a strike. Toronto again came into this series 12th in the American League and earned run average. The Mariners have scored two runs in two nights. Well, Pat Henkin won 32 ball games for the Blue Jays in 92 and 93, 93 and 94, that is, last two seasons. So his six win total this year is very low. Runner goes, so he plays it and run fouls it off. That was the curveball that he finally got in there. Joey Core returns to first base. We mentioned that Robbie Alomar's name has been mentioned in trade talks. David Cohn certainly as well. I wouldn't imagine this young right-hander's going to be going anywhere. The Blue Jays really trying to build the staff around him, aren't they? Yes, they are. They just signed him this spring to a long-term contract, a three-year deal that will keep him in Toronto for the next three years. Two balls, two strikes. Soho lines it into left field. Joe Carter comes on, plays it on a hop. So first and second, nobody out. Now the heart of the Seattle lineup. We're trying to put the Mariners in front. Now Soho's got a pretty good idea about what he's going to get from Pat Henkin. It's a high fastball. You can see he rolls that top hand and gets on top of it and lines it into left field. He's always been a real good hitter. Got a pretty good idea at the plate. He knew with two strikes, Henkin was going to come right after. Well, now Henkin's found himself in a big mess here. Edgar Martinez, former American League batting champ, currently leads the American League in hitting at 363, has really been outstanding all year long with men at second and third base. He's knocked in 56 runs. He's hit 14 homers. And he loves to go to the opposite field. And there he drives it to right. Andy Maldonado drifts back, plays it off the scoreboard. Robbing third is Cora. He will score. Soho will stop at third. Edgar dives in with a double, and the Mariners lead it one to nothing. 26th double of the year. Well, you don't win batting championships without being smart. <laughs> right. He was in up there looking for a first pitch fastball, and he drove it over Maldonado's head off the wall and right. Gore comes in to score. Right down the middle, he's not trying to do anything other than drive it the other way. Great follow through. He knows he's got enough at least to go off the wall. Maldonado plays it off the wall. Soho goes first to third. Cora comes in to score. The Mariners have three consecutive hits in a one-run lead. And another tough hitter up there, Tino Martinez. Out of Tampa, Florida, former U.S. Olympian and an all-star. But Mark McGuire couldn't go. Tino Martinez was placed on the all-star team. And he makes it a breaking ball low. Boy, this young man is really having a career first half. He's two home runs and two RBI away from his total for the entire 1994 season. He has 18 and 58. And he has always been a, a notoriously slow starter. Not so this year. He's got to be excited about the prospects for his second half. Last year, after the 27th of June, he had 353. So he has got himself right around 300 to start the second half. Two balls, no strikes. Edgar Martinez at second. Luis Soho at third. Still nobody out. There's a good breaking ball. 
Yeah, he's got to use that curveball. Dino, very strong out over the plate. He, like so many left-handed hitters in the American League now, like the ball away from them. They'll drive the ball left center, right center. They're not dead bull hitters as they once were in this league. The 2-1. That's ball right through there. There's what that curveball does to hitters. It makes them think about the curveball. That was a fastball right down the middle. He just didn't pull the trigger. Seattle one, Toronto nothing. Still nobody out. Home half of the first inning tonight at the Kingdom. Now Hitkin ready to go back to work. Got him swinging. Nasty cutter. Boy, that's a tough pitch. So one out. Baseball night in America is brought to you by Chevrolet. The cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day. Genuine Chevrolet. By Budweiser, Beachwood Age Budweiser, the king of beers, this Bud's for you. And by Pizza Hut, makers of stuffed crust pizza, it's hard to resist eating it crust first. Along with Buck Martinez, Chip Carey, and our entire Baseball Night in America crew tonight from Seattle, Washington, 1-0 Mariners and Jay Buner the batter. Breaking ball, strike one call, Jay Buner. Hitting 268, you see his power numbers. Has homered in three of his last four games. Missed 15 days with a hamstring problem and is still trying to get the stroke back. Another breaking ball and another strike called 0-2. He's not so sure about that call. He's in a home run against Henkin. And Jay still shaking his head at those two strike calls from Jim Joyce, the home plate umpire. Nothing in two. Big at bat in this ball game. Got him swinging. Climbed the ladder. Two strikeouts in a row. And Henkin, one out away from pitching himself out of a major jam in the first inning. Now the fastball is the pitch that has really started to get Henkin throwing the way he did the last couple of years. It was a borderline strike upstairs, but Buter with two strikes had to go after him. And now Alex Diaz trying to fill in for Ken Griffey Jr. In center field will be the batter. He's the sixth man to hit in the inning. He has a 257, two home runs, and 18 RBIs. Very fleet of foot, good arm in center field. Broke in with the Mariner Ball Club this year in a big way. Hit the first pitch he saw in a Mariner uniform for a home run. That was back in April against Detroit. Interesting situation right here. Remember, Ed Sprague starting at first base for the first time. Diaz is a very good bunner. Sprague might not know how to react if Alex should decide to pull that ball down to first base. Broken bat, bouncer to Alamar. And the Jays are out of a big, big jam. Boy, oh boy, the Mariners had him second and third. Nobody out. Two strikeouts and a broken bat retires the side. A run on three hits after one in Seattle. Mariners won. Blue Jays nothing. The Mariners pick up a run in the first. Now Joe Carter, their left fielder, will lead it off in the second inning for Toronto. He's in a slump. He's still with 14 homers and 44 ribbies and an inside corner heater. Randy Johnson, nothing in one. And the way this guy has pitched all year, one run might be enough. Oh, what a menacing shot that is, peering over that black mitt. And count even to the ball and a strike. Well, Chip, you know, as a hitter, you're standing in there, you know that he throws the ball over 90 miles an hour, and you know you've got to be quick with it. But in the back of your mind, you're still thinking about that breaking ball. Fouls it off, swung late, and it's one and two. Carter's had some success against Randy Johnson. You know, he struck out ten times. He's hitting over 300 with three home runs. The big units. Misses high, two balls, two strikes. Mariners are 14 and two when Randy Johnson starts. He has stopped six different Mariner losing streaks this year. He has been the ace for many years here in Seattle and has led the world in strikeouts the last three seasons. Randy Johnson talks about a session he had with Tom House and Nolan Ryan on mechanics. 
how Ryan explained to him that balance and a good release point and his delivery were very key. I think it was a time in Randy's career where he didn't pay too much attention about mechanics or follow through or delivery. And that caused him a lot of control problems. Cotter pops it up a mile high on the infield. Tino Martinez in fair ground will make the play. And there's the first out. Let's go now to John Saunders for an update. All right, Chip, thanks a lot. Let's uh, bring you up to date on a few games still underway. Terry Mulholland uncorks the wild pitch. Craig Biggio was on second, and he's coming all the way around and does get in there easily to score on the wild pitch. But then Robbie Thompson here with a little single. He has struggled this year. Starting the second half, fights it off his fist. Darren Lewis comes in to score, and that ties the game right now. That's where they stand. The Astros won. The Giants won in the second inning. Marlins and the Dodgers. The MVP of the All-Star Game, Jeff Conine, who won it with a home run, pops this one up down the line. It's a sacrifice fly as Varis is tagging, and with his speed, there's no way they're going to get him. One to nothing is the lead. Bobby Wood has it, but Jose Offerman, who doesn't often do this, his second home run of the year, it's a two-run shot, and the Dodgers have the lead 2-1. They're still in the first inning. The A's and the Indians got a late start because of rain. Alvaro Espinosa. This single that just finds its way through. Ramirez comes in. Sorrento follows him. 4-2 was the score at that point. It's now 6-2. The Indians on top in the fifth. Let's get back to Chip and Buck under the dome. Thank you, John. Ed Sprague, the first baseman. Facing a one ball, two strike count from Randy Johnson. And there's his third punch out of the ball game. He set down the first five men tonight. Now, Cedar. Gaston knew that Randy Johnson would be tough tonight. He threw him a good slider, then goes upstairs with that high heater. He mentioned in the opening that Randy Johnson struck out 15 Blue Jays here last year in his second start against Toronto in the season. Back in June. You heard John mention, of course, the Florida Marlins and the Dodgers. The Marlins got a hit tonight. They got a sack fly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They at least scored. Of course, Ramon Martinez had the no-hitter last night for the Dodgers at Chavez Ravine. What a real jam job there on Candy Maldonado, the right fielder. No balls and a strike. Nine no-hitters now in Dodger history. Something about those Martinez's. Boy, they're having a big year, aren't they? Man, oh, man. Ramon's brother, Pedro, pitched the perfect game for nine innings. Actually, gave up a hit for ten. Biff Roberts, I think, was the man who double to, to break up that perfect game and the no hitter of course seems like every year too there's a Montreal pitcher that has a no hitter or flirts with a no hitter they've done a great job up there at the Expos not a whole lot of success for Maldonado against Randy Johnson Candy's a very good low ball hitter and Johnson's going to try to work him upstairs well Maldonado behind in the count one and two and he strikes out his fourth man of the ball game. Six up, six down. The big units got it going on tonight here at the goal. After one and a half in Seattle, Mariners won. Blue Jays nothing. Mike Flowers takes a breaking ball high from Pat Henkin as we open up the home half of the second inning. One nothing our score from the Kingdom in Seattle. Mike Flowers hitting 223, six home runs, 32 battered in. Just has not been able to get it going offensively to the Seattle team this year. Pops that one up. That might be playable. Lance Parrish over near the Toronto dugout. Leaps up and can't make the play. Well, that's really a tough play because there was no reason to jump, but you just don't know if that ball is going to hit the lip of that roof that overhangs. The dugout floor is the same level as the playing field here. You can actually walk in there, but you see Lance jumps for the ball, actually got a piece of it. But he had an opportunity just to stay there on the warning track. You see just a little lip there before you go into the dugout. Unlike most dugouts that are sunk in the low field level. So Flowers behind the count. Nothing in two. He's battling a two for 23 slump. Last year, Mike had a very solid season for the Seattle team, hitting over 280. Never has hit for an awful lot of power. He's a fine defensive third baseman. Has a great arm. Two and one. Ripped hard to third. Good play over there by Gonzalez. And a strong throw to first. In time. 
four out, number one. Well, Monday on ABC Sports, baseball night in America returns as Edgar Martinez and the Mariners continue their current homestand as they host the Cecil Fielder and the Detroit Tigers or other regional action. Check your local listings for the game in your area Monday at 8 o'clock Pacific here on ABC. Steve Fiziak and Ron Fairley will have that game for you Monday night. Tigers second now in the American League East. What a story. Just four games back of the Boston Red Sox. Chris Park has done a great job with that Tiger team. One ball, no strikes to Danny Wilson. Mariner backstop. They got him in a trade with the Cincinnati Reds before last season. Wilson came over with Bobby Ayala in a trade for Brett Boone. And a count of two and nothing. That's one of those deals that you really like because both ball clubs have benefited from the deal. Boone's done a great job for Cincinnati and they've got a closer and a catcher out of it here in Seattle. 2 0 to Wilson. Outside, 3 0. He saw the Tigers were postponed because of rain. That's welcome relief for the Midwest and the East has just been broiling. So hopefully that'll cool things off for the fine folks out there. No such problem here in the Pacific Northwest. It's been beautiful. And Wilson draws a walk. First of the game from Hemken. You will check out some other scores. Here from the Kingdom. Scott Erickson wins his second straight game as a member of the Orioles staff. As Baltimore beats Kansas City tonight. Minnesota beats the Yankees for the second straight night. Kirby Puckett. Warner Hill. Survived the purge in Minneapolis. Long rain delay in Milwaukee. 3-3 with the White Sox and the Brew Crew at County Stadium. And the Astros and Giants, as John told you a few minutes ago, tied at one. Strike called to Darren Bragg. Little left fielder. Hitting 227, three home runs, 12 RBIs. You look at this guy, you see a little bit of Lenny Dykstra, don't you? Yeah, he's got those big broad shoulders, much like Lenny Dykstra. Shortens up on the bat. There at the plate, he looks a little bit like nails. Dodgers, two to one. Jose Offerman, a home run. We're assuming the Marlins had a hit. Not sure. Never know. Atlanta came from five to nothing down to beat San Diego. The Braves now 12 and one in July. They just don't like being behind. No, I don't think they do. <laughs> they do not like the ball. Frank, swinging a nasty breaking ball. One ball, two strikes. Now scoring the senior circuit. The Cubs lose their third straight to the front running Reds. Well, Grandpa won't be happy tonight. 4-3 the final score at Wrigley Field. Montreal beats Philly. 5-3 the Phillies now. Drop six games back of Atlanta. One and two to Bragg. Double play ball. Alamo. Cedeno. Spray. Four, six, three and out. The Mariners out of luck in the second. We go to the third. One nothing Seattle. <laughs> Seattle one nothing after two. And Alex Gonzalez, the young third baseman at shortstop for the Toronto team, will stand in against Randy Johnson. 260 hitters, six home runs, and 31 runs batted in. Well, it's a different time in Toronto, isn't it? Here's the Johnson pitch. Put a couple of rookies in there and let them play every day. That hasn't happened in quite some time. Now they've gotten to the point in their history where they've got to turn it over somewhat. And that has everybody in Toronto talking about just exactly what they're going to do. Whether they're going to trade Molitor. You mentioned the Phillies in an offensive skid. There's been a lot of talk that Molitor would go to Philadelphia and play some first base and try to pump up that offense. There's a strike from Randy Johnson. Two balls and one strike. Gonzalez is a very good shortstop. He is a pretty good offensive player. You saw his 31 runs driven in. A little chop toward third. Mike Flowers in. Good arm. Throws to first. Seven straight set down by Randy Johnson to open the ball game. Don't forget tomorrow, 1.30 Eastern time, 12.30 Central and Pacific on ABC Sports. Series points leader Jacques Villeneuve and the IndyCar Circuit's best drivers roll into Canada for the Molson Indy Toronto. Then the stars of the Senior PGA Tour shoot it out in the final round of the Ford Senior Players Championship. That's all tomorrow right here on ABC Sports. Well, the catcher Lance Parrish will bat now. 
seemed a little less than thrilled to have to step in against Randy Johnson. He doesn't play an awful lot. Yeah, good news and bad news. Right. Good news is you're starting. The bad news is it's Randy Johnson. Parrish is on his numbers, a 195 average. Fans may not know this. He's the third all-time home run leader for catchers in Major League history. Do you know who the other two are? As you see the Pirates club the Cardinals tonight. There's a strike, one and two. Carlton Fisk and Johnny Bench. And I was going to say Buck Martinez. You ain't, uh, <laughs> At five a year, you know, you got to play an awful <laughs> lot of years. <laughs> uh, one ball, two strikes to Parrish. He lays off. It's two and two. Yeah, Lance had a tremendous career, of course, the heyday with the Detroit Tigers. 1984, when they had that tremendous start on the World Series. Oh, Randy Johnson, his fifth strikeout. Folks, it's not too early to put a tape in the VCR. The big unit's got something special going right now. Eight men in a row start the ball game. Well, he's not nibbling either. He's yeah. coming right at you playing good old-fashioned country hardball. He's got that fastball working. He hasn't thrown many sliders. He's probably thrown only four or five sliders. He's got a lot of confidence in that fastball right now. Here's Domingo Cedeno. Another one of those youngsters that gets a chance to play tonight. Heads up, everybody drive over the top of the dugout and Randy Johnson and everybody walks over just to make sure everyone's okay. I tell you if you if you're not paying attention with a right hand hitter up there you're asking for trouble. See Gaston says I don't think Domingo is really getting around on him. Oh, I don't think he is either. He's a switch hitter batting right handed of course and that's way outside one and one. One thing about Randy Johnson, he will throw a lot of pitches. In his last start, before the All-Star break in Cleveland, he threw 160 pitches in the nine-inning complete game victory over the Tribe. One and one. High chop. Joey Cora makes the play. The throw to first is awful. And into the crowd, it'll be an infield hit and a throwing error. So that breaks up the no-hitter. A single for Cedeno and E4 on Cora. That is the seventh error committed by Seattle in this series. Third by Joey Cora. He knows it's going to be close, and you can bet he's got no hitter on his mind, so he really rushes the throw. It tails away from Tito Martinez. Really no chance to get Cedeno, who runs well. You can see he slides into the bag at first base. The ball bounces out of play. Cora picks up his third error in the series. He made two behind Tim Belcher on Thursday night, and Belcher really threw the ball well. Boy. His defense really let him down. Yeah, it's not often you give up one earned run, turn a triple play, and lose. Mariners managed to do that by committing five errors in that game. And Devon White lines it softly to short, and the side is retired. No runs, a hit. A man left. After two and a half, it's one nothing. Seattle will return with Baseball Night in America, the Jays and the Mariners after this from our ABC stations. Baseball's best play the summer's hottest hit. The Yankees, the Dodgers, the Rangers, and the Phillies are all on Baseball Night in America, Monday on ABC Sports. Mariners one, Toronto nothing. Joy Cora, the leadoff man for the Mariners, will do just that here in inning number three at the Kingdom in Seattle. Cora singled and scored the only run of the game his first time up. He's always hit well against Toronto, over 300 in his career. 314 to be exact. Tough guy to pitch to. A little tiny strike zone. And a switch hitter. Beat a ball into the ground. Can punt as well. Gonzalez at third, however, will spoil Cora's punt attempt. Good play. One out here in the third inning. Good idea by Joey Cora, and he put down a pretty good bunt, but it's so difficult to put down a good bunt on artificial surface. Gonzalez is very sure-handed with a strong arm, and he made a fine play first out of the inning. Pretty good bunt right here toward the end of the bat. He tries to deaden it on this artificial surface here at the Kingdom, but Gonzalez got to it and made a strong throw to throw out Joey Cora. He's got a chance to be a Goobin for a long time, only 22 years old on Miami, Florida. Luis Soho, a single his first time up, takes a strike. The Mariners in that first inning had runners second and third with nobody out and failed 
to hit the ball out of the infield. They did, however, get a run and lead Pat Henkin one to nothing. Randy Johnson on the mound, that's not so bad, but all year long, this Mariner team, especially without Ken Griffey Jr. in the lineup, has really struggled with men in scoring position. So Hose smacks that right back where it came from. So he's two for two. Martinez in the heart of the order due up here. Edgar went the opposite way, doubled off the right field wall, and knocked in his 57th run of the season. Now back-to-back -back curve balls from Henkin, and this one was a hanger. He waves at it, but it's by his glove in the center field. He just left that thing out over the plate, and Louis Soho's two for two. And be careful here with Edgar Martinez. This guy is just a flat-out professional hitter. I mean, you really can't pitch to him. Very intelligent approach. Doesn't try to do an awful lot with the ball. Just hit it hard someplace, usually to right center field. Can hit home runs for you. Doesn't possess great speed. And really, Buck, only now is starting to come back from the hamstring injuries that he suffered two years ago. Well, when Lou Pinella first got here, Edgar pulled a hamstring in Vancouver in an exhibition game. And it took him the rest of the year to really get over it. Manella was scratching his head, saying, I understand this Martinez kid's a pretty good hitter, but I've never seen him play. That's right. He played some third base, but because of those balky legs, they've made him the full-time DH on this team. 1-0, again, a throw to first. And again, Soho back. He's stolen four bases and five tries. You mentioned earlier the Mariners have become a base-stealing team, something they've not had an awful lot of in their years in Seattle. But Lou trying to create offense, creates scoring opportunities, puts runners in motion, especially with Edgar in the batter's box. And he looks inside. Two balls, no strikes. Edgar is very good at picking up patterns. If he sees something that you're going to try to do consistently, like pitch him inside, he'll open up once in a while. You mentioned, Chip, that he likes to go right field, right center. He can go down the right field line. He's got real good ability to hit the opposite way. But every once in a while, he'll turn on a fastball. Changeup missed high there. And it's 3-0. and oh. Tino Martinez on deck, then Jay Buhner. We're in the third inning in Seattle at the Kingdom. Another game tomorrow, the finale of this series. Then the Jays head back to Minnesota. And wrap up their road trip with the two-game series. The Mariners will entertain the Detroit Tigers. And they pitch around Edgar there and walk him on four straight. That's the second Henkin walk. So first and second, again, the Mariners, a chance to do some damage with a man in scoring position. And Tino Martinez will be the batter. Boy, Tino was really despondent after the first game of the series. He was thrown out at the plate on a, a crazy-looking fly ball to right field. He and Chad Cooter had their signals crossed in the ninth inning of that ball game against David Cohn. And he takes a strike. But he hasn't had many things to sulk about this season. As we told you earlier, closing in on career numbers, and we're only at the halfway point of the year. Another change, and he waves weakly, 0-2. Now, Tino Martinez really needs a big pat on the back because of the career-threatening injury he came back from. He tore his ACL here at Sky Dome, running down the base paths, and he worked awfully hard to get himself back. He had 20 home runs last year in the abbreviated season, but it looks like he's on the verge of putting up some real big numbers this year. Nothing in two runners, first and second. One ball, two strikes. The fact that he's an all-star, I think, indicates in the American League especially just what kind of year he's having. You think about McGuire, Fielder, Bovon, Will Clark having a good year. I mean, it's a tough year to be a first baseman in the American League if you want to be an all-star. He made the cut. Strike three inside corner, and Tino knew it. I'll tell you what, Pat Henkin knows how to pitch. He just blistered that ball on the inside edge of the plate. And Tino, a strikeout victim for the second time. You can see Parrish's target inside on the corner. And Tino checks his swing, goes around. I believe that could have been called a swing as well as a called strike. But Henkin has made some very good pitches to Tino Martinez. And Jay Buhner, who struck out on three pitches his first time, will 
Try it again here. And the Mariners struggle to score and struggle to hit when they have runners in second and third. Struggling again here in the third inning. I would be very cautious on the first pitch here. I think Gunner doesn't want to fall behind again. Way outside, they were very cautious. Interestingly about Jay, he's hit 12 home runs this year. All of them against right handers. He's strong away from him. He likes the ball out over the plate. He can catch up to that slider if you leave it out over the middle of the plate. He can miss inside and high. Two balls, no strikes. See how the inner hits out of a slightly open stance and then moves that front foot toward home plate. A good fastball will time up if you make a good pitch with it on the inside. The boy don't make a mistake out of the plate. He can hit it out in any direction. Outside, 3-0. Remember a home run, Jay Buhner, a couple of years ago at Yankee Stadium. Out past where the bullpens are and the monuments. They parked the ambulance. He hit the top of the ambulance. <laughs> Almost 500 feet away. And her faithful would love to see him park one in the upper deck. Here, he'll see something good, 3-0. Oh. Well, maybe he won't. Four straight again. Third walk of the game, second of the inning. And the Mariners have the bases loaded with two outs for Alex Diaz. Center fielder, number one. So hold the third. Andrew yeah. Martinez to second. Buehner trots down to first. Well, no matter who's pitching, Randy Johnson or Randy Smith, Sooner or later, the Mariners have to capitalize on some of these scoring opportunities. It's pretty tough to ask your pitcher to go out and win every night one to nothing. Diaz broke his bat his first time up. Lines out the third to Gonzalez in the side retired. No runs, one hit, bases loaded left. One nothing Mariners back again with baseball night in America. The Jays and the Mariners after this from our ABC stations. Three innings in the books tonight from the Kingdom. Paul Molitor will lead it off for the Jays in the fourth. He swings the first ball and will bounce out to Mike Flowers. One pitch, one out in the fourth. Baseball night in America is brought to you by Buick and your local dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. By Aaron, get a little closer. By MCI, the company that brings you proof positive. Along with Buck Martinez, Chip Carey from the Kingdome tonight in Seattle. Big crowd of 30,000 plus watching Randy Johnson put up the goose eggs. And Robbie Alomar will be the batter. Interesting note on Alomar, a 324 hitter, but only 231 from the right side. So a big difference between the right and left-handed hitting statistics. I don't know if I were Alomar, if I'd want to consider hitting left-handed against this guy, though. Well, I asked Robbie about full-time hitting as a left-hander. He said, you know, I, I, I've thought about it, but I just don't think I'd feel comfortable against Randy Johnson and guys like Mark Langston. Hard throwers that come at you from the side a bit, three-quarter delivery. And Dan Wilson got one on the toe right there. Going to try to walk it off. And you can speak that play with a bit of experience that doesn't feel very good does it no it doesn't you know it just takes a while for the catcher to regroup and Randy Johnson is appreciative of what a catcher goes through so he's going to take his time and let the catcher get the feeling back in that foot they never seem to make those pads quite big enough at times like that right off left toe Wilson a tough kid he'll hang in there one ball two strikes now to Robbie Alomar and bends him backwards it's two and two. And see, that one it wasn't even close. And Alomar still bailing out. You the, mentioned earlier, how do you pick up this guy? He's all elbows and kneecaps, isn't he? Right there, you see, it's very difficult to really pick up where the ball's coming from. He's just got so many things going on there. And remember, he's 6'10. Swinging strikeout. The big hitter has six. Two retired in a row here in the fourth. Let's go to John Saunders for an update. That fielder. Six strikeouts for Randy Johnson, but he does not get a chance to do it with the bat. Over in the National League, Terry Mulholland, the pitcher, sends this one, just basically a routine fly ball, but Derek Bell loses it, falls down, it goes over his head for a three-base error. Kurt Manwaring scores, and the Giants have the lead over the Astros, 4-1 in the third. Chip a 
Thank you, John. Joe Carter swings and fouls a pitch back out of play. No balls and a strike. Carter popped out to first baseman Tino Martinez in the second inning. Well, what a moment for Joe Carter a couple of years ago, winning the World Series for Toronto with that long home run off Mitch Williams. You know, swinging strike. Watching the Blue Jays the last two seasons, it seems like that was about 10 years ago. It has really been a disappointing last couple of years. Injuries have played a big part in the Blue Jays skid. You look at the numbers for Randy Johnson here tonight. Pitching ahead, that's the key. Whoops. That'll keep the batters <laughs> from digging in. Joe Carter kind of a sheepish look on his face. I don't, the way I'm going, I don't need to see this guy tonight. Joe in a one for 17 skid. Ron Fairley tells a great story about Bob Gibson in the old days. Doug Rader would step in there and try to paw and dig a toe hold. Gibby would come off the mat and say, why don't you dug a hole? Why don't you dig a little deeper? Randy strikes out his seventh man. Three up, three down for the Jays in the fourth. We go to the bottom half with the Mariners up by a run. Mike Flowers looks at a fastball high from Pat Hinkin as the Mariners open up their half of the fourth inning. As we predicted, a pitcher's duel so far. Randy Johnson has given up an infield hit and has struck out seven Toronto Blue Jays. Pat Hinkin had a rocky first inning, a run on three hits. But quite frankly, for the Mariners, the offensive output could be much greater. They have left four men in scoring position already in this game and five on base in total. of opportunities and they haven't gotten that big hit against Pat Henkin to really give Randy Johnson a bigger cushion. Not that he needs much of a cushion That's tonight. Right. He's really pitching well. That's four walks now. For Pat Henkin, the leadoff walk in the fourth inning. And Dan Wilson will walk his first time up will stand in now for the Seattle Ball Club. Let's check out the scoreboard see what else is happening around the major leagues tonight. The Rangers beat the Red Sox 7-2. Texas came into the ballgame, a game behind California. That's the Rangers' 41st win of the season. Kevin Gross, a good ball game. The Angels and Tigers rained out. The folks in Motor City thankful for the change in the weather. It's been blisteringly hot. Cleveland, 6-2. Leads Oakland, Oral Hershiser, his second start. This is coming off the disabled list. The Mariners beat him right before the All-Star break. I don't see how that Cleveland team can lose. They're up 12 and a half games already. They've won 48 ball games. They've lost 21. They're on pace to win 100 games this year. Twins beating the Yankees, 8 to 5. Stan Wilson looks low. That's five in a row that Hinkin has missed to start the fourth inning. You mentioned earlier about the home runs that Hinkin has given up this year that Lumberyard in Cleveland knocked him around for five long balls in one ball game. Eight innings against the Indians and they caught up to him for five home <laughs> runs. So you subtract the Indians factor and he has a pretty decent number of home runs against in 16 ball game. Wilson scorches that foul. There are a whole lot of pitchers that would have a much better ERA if you could <laughs> subtract the Indians. Yeah, that'll be illegal. Man, oh man, what a lineup they have. A lot of depth in that lineup. John Hart, the general manager, deserves an awful lot of credit because he had a game plan back in 92. Boy, they've stuck to it, haven't they? First in hitting, first in ERA. Lower quarter of the American League in fielding, but heck, when you lead 90 to nothing every night, you don't have to be perfect. You know, they've got a pretty veteran starting staff. They just recalled Mark Clark, another pitcher from the minor leagues. But their bullpen has been outstanding. Jose Mesa has really made the transformation at closer. Eric Funk's having a great year. And young Julian Tavares has been outstanding. His ERA just over a run of ball game. They sent Chad O.J. down to the minor leagues, a guy that really made life tough on the Mariners. That's popped up. Robbie Alomar will make the play. Wilson fouls out. And there's out number one here in the fourth inning. OJ's still down in the minor leagues. They're expecting to call him back up. Did you say that's the one weakness that 
veteran starting pitching, if one of those guys breaks down, would that be a big enough problem for Cleveland despite their big lead? I think now with the emergence of Tavares, they could plug him in if they needed him. OJ was outstanding. I believe he won five games as a starter. They just released Bud Black. He was one of those veteran pitchers you were right. talking about, so they feel that they have a little more depth. They called up a youngster, Alan Embry, just this week, who was a promising young left-hander that had arm problems, and he appears that he is back now where they hoped he would be. Darren Bragg takes a strike. He bounced into a double play. There's the Indian. Huge lead. 13 games over Kansas City. The Royals just hoping for a wild card berth right now. 1954 Cleveland Indians won 111 ball games in the regular season. Amazing. And then got beat four straight by the New York Giants. <laughs> just doesn't seem fair. Mr. Mays had something to do with that, didn't he? Bragg swings it high fastball. Nothing in two. Willie Mays with that historic catch off of Vic Wirtz in the polo grounds was part of that four game sweep. Might be the most famous catch in World Series history. That particular play. Unbelievable drive. He caught up to nothing in two and Bragg strikes out. And that is the fourth strikeout for Pat Hinkin. Well, tomorrow night on ABC, an hour of America's funniest home videos, followed by a special look at some of your favorite celebrities before they were stars. Then at 8.30, 7.30 Central, Paul Newman and Lolita Davidovich star in the network premiere of Blaze, all tomorrow night here on ABC. One on, two outs, and the top of the order now, Joey Cora, a single. He scored the lone run of the ball game. He's also grounded out to Alex Gonzalez at third. So make sure you tune in tomorrow night before they were stars. And find, out all, find out all about McCartan and Buck Martinez. We featured. Yeah, we shot it last week. Yeah, that's right. Want to know the count to Joey. He's done a fine job despite his problems with the glove the last couple of days for the Mariners. He's done a good job as the everyday second baseman. It's popped back our way and over our heads. You know, you talk about the White Sox getting off to a horrible start, and everybody looks to Jack McDowell leaving as a free agent, but a lot of people believe it was Joey Cora's presence that was in the clubhouse, right? Missing. He had the intensity. Second base is a very important position, and they started out the season with Ray Durham, a youngster that had a lot of errors early on. Ball and a strike. Cora looks inside. One thing about Joey. He's a man's man as Hentgen wants a new baseball. After that five-error debacle here Thursday night, it was Joey Cora, the veteran guy who stepped up in the press and said, hey, I'll take the blame for this loss. Not many guys, young or old, would do that. He did. Well, they were two pretty routine plays, and he just made bad throws, and he said, hey, I, so I started it. I'm the one that booted it around, so don't look for anyone else to blame. Three balls and a strike. Luis Soho is two for two would be next as the fans start to do the wave here at the Kingdom. Mariners like most teams suffering through a big drop in attendance. Losing Ken Griffey Jr. hasn't helped either. Cora line drive up the middle base hit. First and second two outs. And the fifth Seattle hit. Power stops at second and Soho will be the batter. Short time, Luis Soho. This looks like a high changeup out away from Joey Cora. I don't know that Domingo Sedano got a very good break on that ball. He was straight away at shortstop, but it didn't really appear as though he saw the ball off the bat that well. Well, again, another chance now for the Mariners with runners in scoring position. They're just one for six in this situation in this ball game, and only two for 16 in the series. They've scored three runs in as many nights. A base hit here would score Blowers. Good cut. Nothing in one. Uh, Henkin started out somewhere with that cut fastball, thinking that Louie was going to try to jump out ahead. Great fans here in Seattle waving the T-shirts that were part of the big giveaway tonight. Despite the lack of success in the win column, these fans still turn out. They would have drawn over two million last year. There's of course, had the King Dog problem here, the faulty tiles. That has been repaired. 
They made a late push on the strike hit. So Ho chops that toward the hole. Left side, Cedeno Fields flips to Alomar. Oh, what a play. Bang, bang, at second. And they get Cora to retire the side. No runs, they hit. Two left, we go to the fifth inning. The Mariners lead Pat Henkin, one to nothing. One nothing, your score would go to the top of the fifth inning. The big unit, Randy Johnson, punching him out with frightening regularity. Seven strikeouts already in the ball game. And we're only in the fourth inning. A terrifying stat for Toronto when he strikes out 10 or more. Randy Johnson lifetime is 42-9. Ed's break. Takes the ball. One ball, no strikes. He was a strikeout victim his first time up. And he lines it hard to left field. Darren Bragg cuts it off. And Ed Sprague has the second Toronto hit. Sprague's had a disappointing road trip, hitting just 119 into action tonight. He's one for two tonight. That'll raise it a bit. Blue Jays looking to tie it up against Randy Johnson. He's got a one to nothing lead here in the fifth inning. And for the Mariners, you think back at all those base runners they have left early on in this ball game. That could prove to be very, very large as this evening progresses. Maldonado, he struck out, as you see, his first time, and the big unit misses high. One ball, no strikes. Eight times already this season, Randy struck out 10 or more hitters, 58 times in his career. And the big unit needs just 18 strikeouts to reach 1,500 in his major league career. Zips the inside corner, one and one. What does it look like as a hitter to face six foot 10 Randy Johnson? intimidating <laughs> from the side about 95 miles an hour and you really don't know where it's going that's the terrifying part nothing in one the count to Maldonado check swing that was a slider did he go no he did not and it's two and one well Maldonado got a break in my mind I think he could have called it a strike it too looked like a pretty good pitch Maldonado thinking about that fastball got the barrel of the bat going and couldn't hold it back but he caught a break. Now the 2 on. Lion drive into center field on comes Diaz he'll dive and he'll make the catch. He'll get up and throw it first. Tino stretches they got it. Great defense in center field by Diaz the dive and the bullet to first doubles off Edsburg. Well, what a fine play by Alex Diaz in center. He really got a bead on the ball off the bat of Maldonado. Watch the play unfold here as Johnson comes at Maldonado. He didn't really line it, kind of a looping, sinking liner, and Diaz with a great catch, but look how quickly he gets to his feet. Not only does he make a fine diving catch, but he's quickly to his feet and fires a strike to Tito Martinez at first base, and they get Ed Sprague. What an outstanding play. He must lead the world in carpet burns, the way he dives around out there in center pasture. And that fires up the big crowd, as does a strike from Randy. Nothing to one to Alex Gonzalez. 36,037 to pay the tennis at the King Dome tonight. Fourth assist for Diaz and another strike. Well, you can see Ed Sprague shaking his head saying, I should have stayed back. I should have stayed back. He didn't have to commit that far. If that ball got away from Diaz, he would have been able to score anyway. Foul over the Toronto dugouts. Fans battle for the souvenir. No balls, two strikes to Alex Gonzalez, who, as we told you, is from Miami, Florida. We mentioned the name Alex Rodriguez, the fine, phenomenal prospect shortstop the Mariners have. He is also from Miami, Florida. The 0-2. 1-2 now. Yeah, I asked Gonzalez if he had seen Rodriguez play, and he said, no, I haven't seen him play, but I heard a lot about him down in Miami. They're three years apart, basically two years difference in age. Some say that Alex Rodriguez of the Mariners could be a lot like Cal Ripken, built very similarly. I don't know if Alex will play in 2,000 plus consecutive games. And Randy Johnson strikes out his eighth man. Alex Diaz, a great play in center pasture. 
We're halfway home at the Kingdome. The Mariners lead by one. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. One nothing. Mariners have the lead before a loud crowd here at the Kingdome. And Alex Diaz got the glad hand from his teammates. And here's why. Look at our MCI proof positive replay. This is some kind of catch. Outstanding catch and then quickly rises to his feet to throw out Ed Sprague at first base. That saves extra bases for sure and the possibility of a tie ball game. Diaz has done a remarkable job filling in defensively for Ken Griffey Jr. in the center. Great catch, bad haircut. <laughs> you can't have everything, That's Jim. exactly right. Boy, that was phenomenal. He may come up in this inning. He's the cleanup man here in the fifth inning as Edgar Martinez will lead it off. He's been on base twice. He's doubled. He's walked. He's knocked in the only run of the game. Mariners leading one to nothing the way Randy Johnson is pitching. That could be enough. But you never know. Matt Henkin pitching very well himself. Just didn't get out of the gate all that quickly. Otherwise, he might still be scoreless. The first inning has been a problem for Henkin. He started out the game giving up three hits in a row to the Mariners. That led to a run after Edgar doubled off the wall and right. Ball and two strikes to Edgar Martinez. The Mariners came in 34 and 37. They've lost seven of their last nine ball games. The big unit, Randy Johnson, has been the workhorse. The Mariners have won 14 of the 16 games he has started this year in the dirt. The question I have for you, Buck, is the Mariners seven games out. Can they stay in this race without Ken Griffey Jr.? And if they do, assuming he comes back in the middle of next month, certainly he's going to have a big impact, but how long will it take for him to come back and be Ken Griffey Jr.? Well, that's what Pinella is asking himself as Edgar Martinez goes down on the slider. You just don't know what you're going to get when Junior's ready. Even when he's back into the lineup, you don't know if he's going to step back in and how long it'll Wait take him to regain the hitting eye. I talked with the Mariners trainer Rick Griffin before the game. Junior has begun range of motion exercises, is working with the flexible tubing, is lifting some weights, and they're hopeful by the Mariners that he may be back swinging a bat within the next 10 days to two weeks. And they see how wrist fields. Tino Martinez takes a strike. He's had a tough time up there against Mr. Henkin. He struck out twice. I think the big thing for the Mariners is to try to get to 500 and stay at that plateau as long as possible and hopefully Junior can come back and have an impact. Have a curveball beaten foul. And a count of one and two. But it's just a shame this year is so important for the game of baseball that some of its brightest, brightest stars have gotten hurt. Matt Williams of the Giants, Ken Griffey Jr. What a year those two players had last season. Chase of Roger Norris. He didn't go two and two. I thought one of them would do it. I really did. The way they were hitting the baseball. In fact, I think some of the folks played out of straddle automatic baseball game and they said Matt Williams would have done it on the last day of the year in his last at bat. Would have hit 62 home runs. Of course Jeff Bagwell was in the chase too. Tony Gwynn in his pursuit of 400. He's going to do it. Yeah. He, he's going to do it I think. He's Not got so much a, this year but. How about him on an artificial surface. Oh man. If his body could take the physical pounding his batting average would certainly improve day in and day out. 3-2 to Tino. Breaking ball missed. High ball four. That's the fifth walk by Pat Henkin. And Jay Buhner will be the batter. Well, this copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without express written consent from the Office of the Commissioner. Five walks for Henkin. None of them have come back to haunt him, however. But again, you have to be careful with this man, Jay Buhner, a strikeout victim his first time and a walk back in the third. That's staying on his hands here on the first pitch. They're going away. That slider missed up and in. Elsewhere around the big leagues tonight will pop in the scores for you. 
Dodgers lead the Marlins. Two to one. Hideo Nomo has given up one hit. Boy, Boy, he's, what a story. story. If they ever get it rolling. Ramon with the no hitter last night. Andy Adding, he's always top. That bounces up there, 2 0. Oh. Went to the All Star game, and all of the attention surrounding Nomo was incredible. Normally, they have about 15, 20 requests from Japanese media this year. They had over 100. Baseball really needed oh boy, did it ever. Hideo Nomo. It's now a national event, almost a holiday whenever he pitches in Japan. Junior tried to check his swing. He went around, almost fell down, trying to stop his momentum. Two and one. Boy, he was looking breaking ball. Watch this. It's just a bit too high. Tried to shut the swing down. Almost fell down. Went around. He is charged with a swing. Two balls and a strike. Tino Martinez not a threat to run at first. Short lead there. The pitch is high. Three and one. Well, Buhner can guess now. You can just zero in on one spot in the strike zone. And that spot would probably be away because he knows he doesn't have an awful lot of success inside. So you might as well guess for something that you can hit. He got it away and he missed it. Missed his pitch. Full count now, three and two. And that's still some of that timing that Buhner is trying to get back after spending a couple of weeks on the disabled list for the All-Star break. And it's really critical against a guy like Henkin that throws a little bit harder. He's got a pretty good curveball. Timing is very important. And if you're just behind a bit, you'll never catch up to that fastball. Coming inside. And they miss. Sixth walk by Pat Henkin. Surely this is going to catch up with him. Center fielder, Alex. Henkin's thrown 84 pitches, 42 balls 42 strikes but still only trails by a run now you see the first 30 pitches he's had trouble adjusting early in the ball game getting command then he settles in pretty well middle innings 233 average but then after 75 pitches his opponent's batting average balloons to over 350 and he is there right now that was number 85 and that misses high one ball, no strikes. Alex Diaz has grounded to second. He's lined softly to third, but has performed brilliantly in center field. Mariners have already stranded seven in this ballgame. One and oh. Fisted foul ball, third base side. Gonzalez has it. There's out number two. The Mariners now two for 18 in the series. One four eight tonight with men in scoring position. Randy Johnson has to be sitting on that bench thinking, man, oh man, I could use at least one more, maybe two more, fellas. When you're in a one nothing ball game, you have a tendency to grind, and that pitch count number starts to grow, but the wear and tear on you emotionally is even more of a burden. Well, Mike Blowers, two for his last 24. a big insurance run. It's two to nothing. A little soft worm burner right up the middle. His 33rd RBI of the year. Well, finally, one of those six walks comes in to score for the Mariners. It's a breaking ball, and Flowers stays back on it, takes it right back up the middle. A solid base hit with two down, and the Mariners finally take advantage of all of the opportunities that they've been given by Pat Hinkin. Six walks, one of them has scored, and the Mariners enjoy the two or nothing lead. And Dan Wilson will try to add to that total. And it's foul back. No balls, and a strike. Only two hits surrendered by Randy Johnson in the ball game. One an infield hit by Domingo Cedeno, one a solid single by Ed Sprague. Fouls that back again. 0-2. Oh 
And Henkin slapped at that ball coming back from Parrish and got away from him. Similar situation by the Blue Jays in Oakland cost them a run when Angel Martinez threw the ball back to Al Leiter and it sailed into center field. Ricky Henderson scored from second. Wow. I don't think any fines were meted out to Kenny Report over that play, do you? I think that might have been manager stuff. Yeah, it might have been. Wilson pops it up. That hits the pole, holding up the foul screen. Paris chases it down, makes the grab, and it's an out. Lou Pinella's going to come out and say, hey, it hit the pole, holding up the foul screen. It hit the pole high above the Kingdom playing surface and came back into foul territory, and Lance Parrish made the grab. If it hits the speakers and comes back, it's a different story. But the backstop supports are out of play. Pinella's very sure about the ground rules here. This is his home ballpark. Now they're waving the Blue Jays back on the field. That ball is dead when he hits that support high above the backstop. If it is weird and if it can happen in a baseball game, it has happened in this series. Watch Parrish. Now the ball hits the support behind the home plate and he's tracking this ball down. Great effort by Parrish. Ball players are taught to always continue to play. Let the umpires decide after the fact. Manello didn't waste any time. Say, so wait a minute. I know the ground rules here. There you see the backstop that's suspended by cables and a iron support high above the field. And when Paris saw that ball hit up there, he stayed with it and made the grab. But it's no play. One ball, two strikes to Wilson. And it's two and two. Yeah, the Mariner ground rules in their media guide say a batted ball hitting any suspended object in foul territory is a foul ball regardless of where it lands or is touched. sums it up. Wilson one ball two strikes. First and second for the Mariners leading two to nothing. Good eye, Good eye. And it's two and two. There are speakers that are over the field and when it touches those it comes down in play. But the ones that are over foul ground makes contact balls dead. Henkin way ahead of Wilson has run it full. Henkin with six walks already in this ball game. And there's another one. Seven walks. Base is loaded again. It's a new career high for Henkin. Well, it ties his career high against the Yankees June 25th. And Lou Pinella and Cito Gaston have their stomachs a churning for entirely different reasons. Gaston because his pitcher can't find the strike zone. Lou Pinella because his hitters can't make him pay. And Darren Bragg will be pulled from the ball game. Doug Strange, who played left field in last night's game, will come on here in the fifth inning. Bragg had a big swing striking out in the fourth inning. I wonder if he may have pulled something. I think Canelo just wants to send a more veteran hitter to the plate in this situation, trying to bust this game open. And Strange has been the best Mariner pinch hitter this year. Bragg was 0 for 2, hit into a double play, and then struck out in the fourth. That's the reason that he is taking a bench right here. Hitting under 150 with runners in scoring position, worse than the American League. So he'll sit back as Doug Strange gets a chance. He is a 500 pinch hitter, six for 12 with three runs driven home. I don't blame him. Drew Pinella went to the bench. Rag didn't look too happy about that decision, did he? If you don't produce, can't play. Here's Henkin off the windup. I want to know. And that'll bring Galen Cisco, the pitching coach of the Blue Jays, out to the mound trying to settle down Henkin. Three walks in the inning, seven for the game. But 
still he's only trailing two to nothing. Nobody warming up. Down in the right field bullpen for the Blue Jays. That place has been a house of horrors for them this year, too. Sure has. And Darren Hall, their big save leader last year, just had an MRI yesterday on his elbow, so he has got some more problems. And Tony Castillo is pitched in this series, and he has been the most effective reliever, but obviously Cito Gasson would rather not have to go to him in this game at all. Galen Sisko, the pitching coach, went out to have a chat with Pat Henkin. And Cito has had a tough two years here, and it all goes back to not having a healthy Dwayne Ward. Has a ripple effect, a domino effect down in that bullpen. One ball, no strikes to Doug Strange. Two and up. Well, with every pitch that Henkin misses with here, the strike zone for Strange ought to get smaller and smaller. We showed you Henkin's troubles as his pitch count increases. He's in deep trouble here, but there are two outs. Bouncing ball back up the middle and knocked down. That'll save a run. Nice play by Sedeno to knock it down. He saves one, but he can't stop Jay Buhner from scoring, and the Mariners lead three to nothing. And the move by Pinella pays off. Another pinch hit single by Doug Strange. What a job by Strange. Now 7 for 13 as a pinch hitter with four runs driven in. It's a 2-0 pitch, a fastball. Henkin tries to knock it down. Cedeno does knock it down, but he has no play. He keeps the ball on the infield. That saves one run for the time being. He tries to flip to Alomar, who thought about third base, but he drops the ball. Buhner comes in to score. The second Mariner run. And Gary Thurman comes on as a pinch runner for Doug Strange, who gets congratulations from his teammates. So 3 nothing. Mariners with seven hits now. Bases still loaded. Still two outs. And Joey Cora, the eighth man to bat in the inning. He looks high. One ball, no strikes. Over 30 pitches for him getting this inning. He's thrown 67 through four. The veteran right-hander starts to loosen up. A chance to break this thing wide open. There's a strike. Joey Cora, two for three tonight. He scored one of the three runs. He has two singles. The Jays trying for their second longest win streak of the year at three games as Cora bounces out into a fielder's choice. Gary Thurman retired six unassisted at first to retire the side. The Commanders pick up two very big runs. Three walks helped. And after five innings here at the Kingdom, the big unit, Randy Johnson, leads it three to nothing. Three nothing Mariners after five. Gary Thurman stays in the ball game for Seattle. He'll play left field. And Lance Parrish, the catcher, will lead it off against Randy Johnson, who has punched out eight Toronto Blue Jays, now has 1,490 career strikeouts. Needs 10 for 1,500 in his big league career. He's almost a certainty to get to 3,000 before he's finished. And Parrish fouls it off. He's a strikeout victim as well tonight. By inning, Randy Johnson has had at least one. Five innings he has pitched. He's been very economical too, which is unlike him. Just 67 tosses so far in the game, and number 68 a strike as well. Well, he's had a good delivery all night long, and has kept him right around the strike zone, both with the fastball and with the slider. Watch the balance. He gets out on that front foot. He's balanced. His delivery takes him right toward the hitter. Everything is together tonight for Randy Johnson. Oh. Overmatched was Parrish there. Strikeout number nine in the ball game. Well, Saturday on ABC Sports, Masters champion Ben Crenshaw. U.S. Open winner Corey Pavin, the world's top players, travel to historic St. Andrews as we begin coverage of the British Open Golf Championship. Then, two of the most exciting names in golf meet. Nick Price and Greg Norman tee off on Shell's wonderful world of golf. And on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the Tour de France rolls into the final stages and an inside look at Iron Mike Tyson. That's all Saturday right here on ABC Sports. Mingo Cedeno, one of the two Toronto hits. Right now, Randy Johnson is just twirling a masterpiece. 
You mentioned earlier his conversations with Tom House and Nolan Ryan. You make a good point when you talk about balance with Randy Johnson. The critical factor for him is not so much his release point as a bouncing ball over the mound. Cora fields, fires, throw to first, diving slide by Cedeno. He has a second infield hit. But for Randy, the key for him is land on the ball of that front foot. That's his big, big critical factor. Well, he's 6'10", but he can't come up with this ball over the mound. He jumps for it. It's beyond his glove. Joey Cora makes a fine effort firing across his body. Here's another look at it. Little ball beaten into the dirt in front of home. Johnson gives it a good effort. Cora coming from his position throws across his body. And Sedano has his second hit of the night. Yeah, Randy needed Shaquille O'Neal height to make that play. Oh, nasty slider. Might be the best one of the night going there to Devon White. He's over two. a little while for him to uncork. But if the ball gets in pretty good shape to the plate, so you give your catcher a chance that way. Well, you don't want him to make any adjustments just to neutralize the running game to take anything away from his strikeout ability. But they can steal second and third, and he can still strike out the side and strand the run. That pitch right there was unhittable. White swung over the top of it, one and two. Well, now he can go upstairs with the fastball out of the strike zone because he's got the bond thinking down around the knees. High fastball. Good call, Buck. Ten strikeouts. Randy Johnson for the ninth time this year has reached double digits in punch outs. And for the 59th time in his career, he's done that. Well, having the extra two runs now really allows him to be more aggressive just pound the strike zone when it was one to nothing he was thinking more about quality pitches mm -hmm. now he can think power I dare you hit it out or to make contact quite frankly and now Paul Molitor he and Sedanio are the only two players not to strike out in the ball game against Randy Johnson Paul has yet to get the ball out of the infield really gone to the slider in this inning and it's been brilliant. Cleveland's beaten Oakland now 7-2. Manny Ramirez is 20th home run of the year. What a year he's had. The Giants and the Astros tight ball game 6-5 now on the top of the fifth at Candlestick. One and one. Ball Molitor. What a great moment for Molitor a couple of years ago. His first season with the Blue Jays after all those years of toil with Milwaukee. He earns his first World Series championship ring. There's a hard drive deep toward left, but well foul. He pulled the breaking ball. It's one and two. The monitor had so many great years in Milwaukee. Actually got the World Series in 82 playing against the Cardinals, but got that championship ring in 92. One thing the Blue Jays have done last few years when they made those key deals they went out and got talented players but they also got players with character well that was just what I was thinking all the negative things you hear about the game and the off the field problems it's a shame you don't hear more about guys like this man in the batter's box talk about a class human being always very cooperative his time with the media very forthcoming in his requests or media's requests for interviews you can tell this man has a passion about the game that I wish more people had. Two balls, two strikes to Molitor. And Randy just missed. Well, he came up with the Brewers with some pretty good players around him. Players like Larry Heiser, the batting coach, Sal Bando, the great Oakland Athletics captain for so many years. Don Money, guys that really taught him how to play. Alongside his youthful partner, Robin Young. So he learned about playing the game properly when he first joined the Milwaukee Brewers. Well, Randy Johnson with 10 strikeouts hasn't walked anybody. The 3-2 now. And there's his first of the ball game. 
So Randy Johnson in the last two games has struck out 23 men and has walked now one. It's a pretty good ratio. Now that's pitching. Well, Fanella has heard the comments about his star left-hander that he was a power pitcher, but man, oh man. One walk, ten strike, he has just three hits here in the sixth inning. Two of them haven't left the infield. I mean, is that a fair comparison to say or a fair comment to make about Randy that he's just a thrower? Has he become a, a more complete pitcher now? Oh, no question about it. Just because he keeps his walks down, he understands game situations, he knows the score, he's pitching according to the score, and I think that's what you have to do. Roberto Alomar has been struck out twice, first and second. He represents the time run, and there's that slider. It's been his best pitch this inning. Well, that's okay. another thing that he's done. He's managed his pitches very well because early in the game, he used a lot of fastballs. He used a four-seam fastball, a sinking fastball. He didn't throw many sliders. He didn't need to. Now, as the game wears on and the Blue Jays are very aware of the fastball, he's dropping more sliders in there. One and one now. He just missed. Can you imagine if Randy Johnson developed a circle changeup like Not Tom Glavin or Greg Maddox? That would be illegal. <laughs> Nobody would want to step in. They don't want to step in there now as it is. They'd have to vote on that. I'm sorry, Randy. You just can't throw <laughs> can't a changeup. Two balls and a strike. Yeah. Well, he skips the rope. Now Randy behind three and one. He's in danger of loading the bases with two outs and Joe Carter lurking on deck. Carter's had pretty good success against Randy Johnson, although not so tonight. Let me tell you about Alomar. He is one of those players that really enjoys these types of situations. 3-1 count. He can really sit on a pitch. Well, smoke. He could Ran sit on it, it, but couldn't catch up to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a nice safety net to go to. It, and you can throw a 97-mile-an-hour fastball behind 3-1. and one. And he's not satisfied with it. That's what I love about this guy. He wants to go out and throw a no-hitter every night. And he's got the stuff. He's got the capability to do it. And obviously, a human being. Three and two. The runners go. Foul back. You know, I admire Randy Johnson for that kind of attitude because that's his job. Nowadays, you hear a lot of pitchers talk about quality starts. Well, I did my job. There's another fastball right down the middle, and Alomar can just get a piece of it. But when Johnson goes there, his job is to win in his mind. Yeah, and go nine. And I agree with that. That's what a starting pitcher should think about. Three balls, two strikes to Alomar. Runners first and second. The payoff. Found on. Because of the advent of arbitration and all of the statistical comparisons, a lot of pitchers have fallen into that. Well, I gave my good six innings. Right, right. I got a quality start. I hate that quality start stat. I think that's really overworked. Starters, you go out there, give your team a chance to win. Molitor at first. Cedeno at second to pitch. Ball. Four. Did he go? They'll appeal the first. Gary Cedarstrom says no swing. So the base is full of Blue Jays. And Joe Carter, the hitter. But first, Monday at ABC Sports, don't forget to join Steve Fisiak and Ron Fairley as the Mariners continue their current homestand as they host Cecil Fielder and the Detroit Tigers or other regional action. It's baseball night in America. Check your local listings for the game in your area Monday at 8 o'clock Pacific time right here on ABC. And now Bobby Cuellar, the Mariner pitching coach, out for a quick pep talk. The Jays have the tying runners aboard now in the sixth inning. Two consecutive Randy Johnson bases on balls. Alomar fouled off a couple of close pitches and then takes this high pitch, and you could see the bat barrel just didn't go around, didn't cut the plane of home plate. Boy, you talk about a matchup, huh? This is baseball right here. Randy Johnson against Joe Carter with the bases loaded. Blue Jays down by three. Carter won for his last 18. Randy Johnson with 10 strikeouts. He'll work off the stretch. And the slider over. And Carter looks back and says, that's just not fair. This is what has really been outstanding. This is when Johnson really gets tough. Just 18 for 106 this year. 170 opponents batting average with runners in scoring position. 
Nothing in one. Nothing in two as Carter fouls it off. They never want to be in a hole to Randy Johnson, but Joe Carter is a good low ball hitter. He's not been as productive in these situations as he has been the last couple of years. But he's going to have to fight to lay off of that high Randy Johnson heat. Low balls, two strikes. The unit delivers. Little pop. It's playable at first for Tino Martinez, and the inning is over. And Carter flips the bat away in disgust. We're through five and a half to Kingdom. The Mariners lead the Blue Jays three to nothing. Luis Soho backs away from a Pat Henkin breaking ball as we open up the bottom of the sixth inning. There's your score. Three hitter from Randy Johnson. And three Mariner runs. Difference in the ball game. Pat Henkin has walked seven, but he really hasn't pitched all that badly. He's pitched himself out of a couple of big jams, one in the first, one in the third. But the walks finally caught up to him in the last Mariner inning. Walked three men, two of them scored. Young right-hander. This is low. Two balls and a strike to Luis Soho with a couple of base hits tonight. Also bounced into the fielder's choice. So he's two out of three. Soho lines that toward left. Carter in between. A nice play to knock that ball down. If he doesn't, Soho's got extra bases. Well, he made a commitment to come after it, and then he saw that he wasn't going to get it, so he was fortunate to trap it. Baseball night in America is brought to you by Beachwood H. Budweiser, the king of beers. This Bud's for you. By Sears. Come see the many sides of Sears. And by Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Along with Buck Martinez, Chip Carey from the Kingdom in Seattle. Third game of a four-game weekend series between the Mariners and the Blue Jays. Toronto's taken the first two games in crazy fashion. They won game one behind David Cohn, four to one. The Mariners committed five errors in that game, turned a triple play and lost. And then last night, Juan Guzman, who had not won a game all year on the road, pitched eight innings of one-run, three-hit baseball. Martinez, the batter, quickly falls behind, nothing to two. Three nineteen with two strikes. That's second in the American League. Look at Bayerga, three sixty five. Those two guys were teammates in Winter Bowl. Isn't that something? <laughs> the O two. Little chin music. Edgar backs away. Wants to get the backside of the uniform dirty. Is the front's dirty as well? Did that sliding into second with a double in the first inning. I don't think Randy Johnson was thinking that that was anything intentional there. That ball wasn't that far inside. Edgar was just diving out over the plate to protect that outside corner. One ball, two strikes. The crowd chanting the hitter's name here. Uh, past Sam Perlazzo, the Mariner third base coach. Ball bounces off the little camera well to the left of the Mariner dugout. A crazy play in that first game of the series. Chad Cruder and Mike Flowers were retrieving a wild pitch that bounced all the way over past that dugout and rolled underneath that fence. Well, the Mariners rectified that problem. They stuck a couple of two-by-fours underneath. Gave themselves a little home field advantage. One and two pitch again to Edgar. It's now two and two. That was one of, if not the strangest baseball game I've ever seen. Thursday night here. A little bit of everything. Not a lot of it good either. Well, there was pretty good pitching early in the ball game, and Belcher pitched well all night. He matched up with David Cohen, but then the Mariner defense fell apart behind Belcher, and that was the difference in the ball game. The 2-2 two -two now. Well, this guy can swing that back, can he? Yeah, how do you pitch to him? Well, you just got to mix it up and throw a lot of pitches over the plate, change speeds. He is basically thinking right half of the field right now with two strikes. He'll pull a mistake, but all he wants to do is stay inside the ball and put the big part of the bat on the ball and go the other way. Well, he was behind 0-2. He's looked at four pitches, and now it counts even. 
two balls, two strikes. On that winter ball team, Edgar Martinez, Robbie Alomar, Carlos Baerga, Carlos Delgado, all on the same team. Not too shabby. Delgado's down to Triple A for Toronto, playing first base now. What does that mean for John O'Rourke, if anything? Well, I don't know that they're going to really make an all-out attempt to trade O'Rourke right now. He's having an off year. He hit 297 last year, but Delgado's going to get to play somewhere next year up here in Toronto. Full count now, three and two. Nice at bat here for Edgar Martinez. He's fought off a couple of pitches, was behind, nothing at two. And now it's full, and the other Martinez, Tino, waits to hit next. Boy, Delgado last year got off to that unbelievable start, bombing baseballs off restaurants at the Sky Dome. He had eight home runs in April. Runner goes on the 3 2, Edgar pounds the count. deep is the Toronto farm system. I know it's, it can't be as deep as it used to be with all the trades that the Jays made trying to cement division championships and the like. This spring, Cito Gaston said that he had a pretty good group of young players in camp, probably the best he'd seen for a while, but they're all basically double-A and lower. Triple-A uh, is really not that plentiful with players that are on the verge of making it to the big leagues outside of Delgado. Runner goes again, three and two, ball four. Henkin misses inside. He has walked eight men in this game, and that is a new career high. But a great at bat for Edgar. Behind nothing and two, Henkin lost him. And now runners first and second with nobody out in the bullpen for Toronto gets busy again. Watch this pitch. You can see that that pitch isn't quite as close as Edgar thought, but he hangs in there so long that when he recognized it was up and in, he bails out. Third time he did it in that at bat. It'll be interesting to see how Randy Johnson evaluates those pitches as you see Danny Cox up for a second time down in the bullpen. Well, here's Tino Martinez. He scorches one down the left field line. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. He scored one of the three Mariner runs. The Blue Jays had a nasty situation down in Oakland in the first game of the doubleheader right. when David Cohn was on the mound and hit Mark McGuire in the head. That touched off a beanball situation back and forth. La Russa retaliated. Threw one behind John Oldwood. Tino pops it up. Playable at third for Alex Gonzalez. He'll fight the high kingdom roof and put it away. And there is. Out number one here in the sixth inning. Well, Joe Carter answered that the way you want it answered. Hit a monstrous home run late in the ball game. And how long was the home run shot? It was 32 seconds. <laughs> it didn't start until about 10 steps down the first base line because Carter had been hit in the sixth inning as the Russo continued to try to defend his players. Mike Harkey hit Joe Carter and Joe didn't even look at Harkey he just turned to the dugout and screamed at La Russa. That's when all the anxiety started. A strike inside to Jay Buhner. He's walked twice. He struck out once. Mariners have gotten eight walks. They've wrapped out eight hits but they've only scored three times. Buhner pops that one up. Jays give chase, but the run out of it. Nothing in two. Well, how's the order doing? Top, middle, and third, last three. Well, they've been setting the table. First three batters with six hits tonight. The middle three, 0 for 7. That's why this game isn't more lopsided than it is right now. Well, that's a perfect example. If we can show that graphic again, of how the Mariners miss the presence of Ken Griffey Jr. It's tough to replace 45 home runs in your lineup. But Edgar Tino and Buhner trying to do it. One, two. Now two and two. Get the feeling Henkin's starting to run on fumes right now. He's well over 100 pitches in the ballgame. 
thrown 118 unofficially. Ball game. Danny Cox appears to be ready if needed in the pen. I again, three balls, two strikes. Same scenario that he had with Martinez Edgar before him. Got ahead 0-2, then lost him. Now he was ahead of Jay Buner 0-2. He's got another full count. Runners first and second, one out. Buner fouls it away. There's Galen Sisko, the fine pitching coach of the Blue Jay Ball Club. He's had a tough year. Had to deal with injuries. First they lost Dwayne Ward. As you look at the pitch count for Hinton. 121. Again the 3-2. Ball four. Ninth walk of the game. For Pat Hentgen and the Mariners have the bases loaded for Alex Diaz. You just can't walk nine batters and expect to win a ball game. I don't care how good your stuff is. Well, Mr. Diaz has had some opportunities tonight. In the first inning, had him second and third two outs. In the third inning, had the bases loaded with two outs. In the fifth inning, had him first and second with one out. And he has yet to get the ball out of the infield. He's hitting 253. One for 11 in this series. Is Marin a switch hitting center fielder? Enkin goes to the windup now. And that misses. 1-0. with nine walks he's given up only three runs that's low two and oh and when you're struggling like this those borderline pitches that you think you'd normally get you don't get when you walk to eight or nine men sure Luis so excuse me is at third Edgar at second Jay Buner the runner at first for the Mariners and that's in the dirt three balls no strikes a walk means another run Now well, Pat Hinken is self-destructed here tonight. The 3-0. Right through there. He has done a pretty good job of minimizing the effect of nine walks. But he certainly hasn't made it easy on his manager, Cito Gast. Hinken again ready. Now the 3-1. Back. You have to give him credit for that. He doesn't have his good stuff tonight, but he's kept his team in the ball game. Yeah, there's not an awful lot of give up in Pat Hinkins makeup. He is a tough guy, but it's been a disappointing and frustrating season for him all year long. He won his last two starts, but tonight trails three to nothing. Now the payoff pitch. Diaz come back into the mound. Out of the plate and out at first. Oh boy. Chances as Alex Diaz had tonight, and he's come up empty each and every time. The Mariners lead two more, they lead three to nothing, and we'll return with baseball night in America. The Jays and the Mariners after this from our ABC station. Sure has. He has stranded seven base runners right here with a chance to drive in a couple of runs. He hits it back to Henkin, who fires to Parrish, who goes to Sprague for the one, two, three double play. Very frustrating night for Diaz at the plate. But, but remember, <laughs> he's made a great defensive play. Well, Randy Johnson settles for the 3-0 lead, fires a strike to Ed Sprague as we open up the seventh inning here at the Kingdom in Seattle. The big unit, Randy Johnson, has given up three hits. He struck out ten. He's walked only two tonight. The slider has been terrific the last couple of innings or so. The spin on that slider is so tight, you don't see any of the seams, and you can't tell breaking ball or fastball. So you think fastball, you swing over the top of it. The 0-2. Buck, if you're a pitching coach nowadays, it, it seems to me that kids coming up today, young pitchers, try to throw a cut fastball, two-seamer, four-seamer, split finger, knuckle curve, slow curve, sliders, all that stuff. The game has changed so much. You mentioned pitchers don't complete games like they used to. Have they gotten away from the basics? Good fastball, good curveball, good changeup. No question about it. Spray 
pitch. I think out. pitchers in general haven't developed their fastball. And as young kids, they see big league games, they see these forkball specialists, and they want to trick everybody. Where I think if you think of the dominant pitchers in the league, they all use their fastball very well. Randy Johnson, Kevin Apio. Greg Maddox. Oh. <laughs> 11 strikeout for Randy Johnson. We'll talk more in a moment. First now, it's time for tonight's Toyota Diamond Dust Baseball Fact. Fact is, the Yankees have had a different RBI leader every year in the 1990s. The question is, which two players led the Yankees in RBIs in each of seven consecutive seasons? We'll have the answer for you in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Do you buy the argument that aluminum bats play somewhat of a part in that because pitchers, if they have a decent fastball still can't come inside because aluminum bats are still are strong enough or able to drive the ball somewhere if you jam. Yeah I'll believe a little bit of that but Mike Messina told me that he used the fastball a lot he just pitched away. He got the very good control of the outside corner. I think that if I were teaching a young kid nowadays I would just develop arm speed fastball. Good one there one and two. I think what you're seeing now in Atlanta and you think about the great pitching staff in Atlanta Leo Mazzoni their pitching coach has them throw twice in between starts they throw a lot they're developing their arms all the time. One and two to Candy Maldonado he fouls it back but then that begs the question four man rotation versus a five man rotation and has the radar gun changed this game of baseball from the mound. Yes, I think so. I think both of them are very important things. I think you have to set your entire organization to the mindset that you take your four best pitchers and you make sure they pitch as much as possible. Another thing I would do is I wouldn't develop closers. I would develop arms, give them a lot of innings, let them pitch a lot in the minors. One and two. Oh. Twelve strikeouts. Maldonado chased a terrible pitch. And we could talk about this probably the rest of the night, but it seems too that teams are developing pitchers at the major league level, whereas before players would have 1,500 at bats or 500 innings pitched in the minor leagues before they got a chance to try it out at the major league level. Well, Randy Johnson is the type of guy that has always thrown a lot of innings and has been able to refine his pitching to the point now where he is the most dominant pitcher in the big leagues. One ball, no strikes to Alex Gonzalez. When you think about the great closures that really started the trend of closing, Alex Gossage, Bruce Suter, Sparky Lyle, Raleigh Fingers, they all started in the minors. They were starting pitchers, pitching 150 to 200 innings, developing arm strength for non mechanics, and then they made the transition in the big leagues. One ball, one strike. The amazing thing about Randy Johnson is he can yes throw 160 pitches and win a ball game and go nine innings but come that ninth inning when it's time to polish you off he's still throwing mid 90s heat. Now, that's another sign of a thoroughbred in my mind. This is his game. He's going to put it away. Pat Henkin has really been his own worst enemy tonight although he's only given up three runs and nine walks. Really hurt him. The 2 2 now. Breaking ball, chop foul. And nine walks, but he should feel lucky only two of them scored. Well, what they did, though, they really ran his pitch count up to right. a point where he can't finish this ball game and right. keep himself into the game. You know, you think back to the great winning pitchers that we've known going back to the 60s, the Marischals, the Gibsons, the Drysdales. When those guys got late in the ball game, they closed the game. Right. It was theirs. There was no looking over their shoulder. 2-2. Yeah. He strikes out the side. Well, the high heat for the big unit. 13 punch outs in the game. We go to the seventh inning stretch. The Mariners enjoy the three to nothing lead. Nothing is our score. As we go to the bottom of the seventh inning here at the Kingdom in Seattle, Randy Johnson with 13 strikeouts has a three-hit shutout. Let's send it to John Saunders now for an update. 
All right, guys, with Danny Cox on the mound, we'll stay with you. The Marlins and the Dodgers first. Eric Karros ground out to Pendleton at third. At least it should have been. He loses this one, and Offerman scores. 3-1 is the lead. Hideo Nomo comes up with his first ever major league hit, but more importantly for him, he's looking for his seventh victory of the year against just one loss. 3-1, the Dodgers now with the lead in the eighth inning. The Astros and the Giants, and Robbie Thompson looking for his second hit of the game. Also drove in a run, but Mouton comes up with a terrific catch. And right now, this one stands. Houston has fought back at 6-5 in the seventh inning. The White Sox and the Brewers, Greg Vaughn with a home run is 10. They lead it 8-4 in the eighth. Back to you. Thank you, John. Mike Flowers is the batter for the Mariners, leading off the seventh inning. Manny Cox making his 18th appearance of the year for the Jays. It's been a long time since he's been on the mound in Toronto. Yeah, he worked in the first series of this ball game back in Anaheim on Thursday, nine days ago. You see, he's not had a good year. 32 hits, 28 and two-thirds innings. Flowers went around. That's a strikeout. He's going to hustle down to first. Can he beat the Rabbits? Danny Cox and Lance Parrish had problems last time they worked together with wild pitches. Two balls got away. It's a strikeout for Cox, a wild pitch. In Anaheim, Cox had two wild pitches just like this, breaking balls in the dirt. It got away from Lance Parrish. Flowers literally busts out of the batter's box. Parrish plays the ball off the backstop, but he can't get the ball to first base in time. Goes all the way back to the backstop. His throw is late. Danny Cox came up with the Cardinals. He was a hard four. Won 53 ball games in the mid 80s for St. Louis, then developed arm troubles. Has won just 18 games since, and he's been on the disabled list seven separate times during that time. So he has tried to come back, but hasn't quite been able to regain the magic. Dan Wilson, the Mariner catcher, showed a bunch on the first pitch from Danny Cox. He's 0 for 1 with a couple of walks. 3 0, Mariners leading, bottom of the seventh inning. Gonzalez in at third. Sprague holds the runner at first. And Lyra Stamper's back standing. Danny Cox was a very important member of the Blue Jays World Series team in 93. Pitched in 44 ball games. Saved a couple, but he ate up a lot of innings in the middle of the game. Wilson tries to bunt and missed it. Nothing in two. This is an, a part of baseball, the lost art of bunting. As you mentioned earlier, it's tough to do it on the artificial surface. Boy, boy, in the old days, it's a way to get a lot of hits. He is jabs that breaking ball and can't make contact. Some places they don't even put out bunting on opening day. <laughs> That's a ball start, too. No balls, two strikes. Wilson swings, flies it into left. Joe Carter will pocket that can of corn, fights the high kingdom roof, now has it. And there's out number one. Well, here's tonight's Toyota Diamond to Dust answer. For the question, which two players led the Yankees in RBIs in each of seven consecutive seasons? Well, how about those names on the list? The Iron Horse, Lou Gehrig, and Yogi Berra. That's pretty surprising when you think of Berra's teammates at that time, but it was Yogi Berra, the catcher of the Yankees, that led the team in RBIs. A player named Mantle was on that team. Mm -hmm. Gary Thurman, who came on as a pinch runner back in the fifth inning. Makes his first plate appearance in the ball game. Nothing in one for Thurman, one of many Mariners called up from Triple-A Tacoma this year. Gary has blazing speed, and he can really fly. Hitting 400 on the year, hasn't had many at-bats. Mariners looking for someone with some power to play the outfield for him. And he missed that ball by about two feet. Gary has 20 at bats, three RBIs, eight hits, and five steals in seven attempts. He's a little anxious on that Danny Cox offer. Got it. Danny Cox with his 
second strikeout of the inning. He should be out of the inning, but the wild pitch will make him face a fourth hitter here. And Joey Cora, the batter. He is two out of four, two singles, and he scored one of the three Mariner runs. The Mariners are looking for their fifth shutout of the year. Andy Johnson going for his second. Smokes that back to the chicken wire. Nothing in one. Out of 36,037 now settling in at the Kingdom. They have really been dazzled by Randy Johnson's pitching performance tonight. He has struck out 13 Toronto hitters. Just missed. If things stay the way they are. Johnson will stop the seventh Mariner losing streak of the year. Mariners will go 15 and 2 in his starts. Randy flirting with a major league record. Strikeouts per innings pitched. I'll show you that graphic when he comes to the mound, perhaps in the eighth inning. A ball and a strike to Cora. One and two. And the Cox looking pretty good so far in this inning, isn't it? Throwing a lot of sliders and that's generally his pattern. He'll throw sliders to both left-handed hitters and right-handed hitters. He has lost some of the velocity that he had when he was a starter for the Cardinals back in the mid-80s. One and two now. Two outs, the pitch. Well, Joey Cora swings, and Lance Parrish will throw to first, and Danny Cox got four outs in the inning, struck out two, actually struck out three. The Mariners out of luck in the seventh inning. We go on to the eighth. We'll see if the big unit can keep up that wicked strikeout pace in a 3 nothing game. Baseball's best play the summer's hottest hit. The Yankees, the Dodgers, the Rangers, and the Phillies are all on Baseball Night in America, Monday on ABC Sports. Welcome back to Baseball Night in America. Seven innings complete, 3 to nothing. The Mariners have the lead. Randy Johnson with 13 strikeouts, and Bucky's Closing in on one of his idols, Nolan Ryan, for the most strikeouts per nine innings pitched. He's got a chance to set the major league record this season. Well, each time out there, he's got a chance for double figures tonight, 13. Season high, 15. Back on the 24th. Career high, 18 strikeouts for Randy Johnson. He came against Texas a couple of years back, 1992. Of course, Randy with a no-hitter to his credit, one of the two Mariner no-hitters in franchise history. You know who pitched the other one? I'm sure you do. The fans at home may not know. It was Chris Fazio in his first season here with the Mariners against the Boston Red Sox. There's the Boz. He lost the game last night. As Lance Parrish takes strike two call. One ball, two strikes. He has been struck out two times. We told you he was... The good news, bad news man tonight facing Randy Johnson. It's two and two. You know, we were talking before the game to Lee Elia and some of the coaches down around the batting cage about dominant pitchers that they've seen throughout their career. Strike three, 14, and four in a row. He gets stronger as the innings get bigger. One out. Well, obviously, Randy Johnson was the center of that conversation for the way he dominates ball games, but another left-hander came into the conversation, and that was Steve Carlton. Right there, just a fastball right by Lance Parrish. Steve Carlton was a hard thrower, but his out pitch was a nasty slider. Daniel, one of two Toronto players who has not struck out in this game. Randy kind of is going to take that as a personal affront. He's two for two, both hits on the infield. A ball and a strike. Look out, folks. One and two, he's got him set up again. Uh, Domingo Cedeno has gotten a little bit more playing time this year than he expected, I'm sure, and he's done a good job. 
Defensively, he has a lot of range and a strong arm. He's the older brother of Andahar Cedeno, who just went from San Diego to Houston. Andahar also a shortstop. One and two from Randy Johnson. Got it. He ties his season high. 15 strikeouts and five in a row. He is incredible. Well, you put Johnson in a elite class with the great closers of ball games, guys that put the game away. Five in a row. And here's the strikeout chart. He's got Lance Parrish three times. Molitor is the only one that hasn't struck out tonight. He's got White twice, Alomar twice, Sprague, Maldonado, Gonzalez all struck out twice. You know, 167 strikeouts on the year. Again, he came in needing 18 for 1,500 in his career. He might get it tonight. He's got a shot. He strikes out three of the last four hitters in the game. He could do it. One ball, one strike. Randy Johnson last year pitched the final game of what turned out to be the season last year in Oakland. Finished off that game with a strikeout. One and one to the one white. Strike to call. He even took something off that slider. Now he made a real good pitch with it. Took a little bit off of it and dropped it on the outside corner. The way he's going, the hitters might want to go up there with a, a couple of tennis rackets. They might have a better shot. One ball, two strikes. Here comes the pitch. It's two and two. Well, he brought his A game to the party tonight. Oh, did he ever. <laughs> did he ever. Tell you what, if you had to win one game, this guy wouldn't be a bad guy to choose if you had to send him to the mound. If you had to win one game, who would you take? Greg Maddox, Kevin Apier, Randy Johnson, Tom Glavin, Hideo Nomo. I'm going to take two guys. I'm taking Maddox to go against Johnson. I think that would be a tremendous wow. matchup. Different styles, but similar results. Wouldn't that be great to have interleague play and see that matchup a couple of times a year? Boy, boy, that'd be something. Two balls, two strikes, the pitch. Slayer, he went around. He struck out six in a row. And a new season high. 16 punch outs for the big unit. And after seven and a half here at a frenzy kingdom, the Mariners lead the Jays three to nothing. Randy Johnson with six consecutive strikeouts. Oh, even in slow motion, it's hard. <laughs> it sure was. <laughs> Luis Soho swings the first pitch here and flies out to Candy Maldonado in right field for out number one. In case you wondered, the Mariners record for consecutive strikeouts, also by a hard-throwing left-hander. Mark Langston, June 15th of 84 against Texas, struck out seven Rangers. And the major league record by a right-hander, Tom Seaver. Tom Seaver struck out ten. I believe it was against the San Diego Padres. Here's Edgar. He's doubled, he's struck out, and he's walked twice. Guess you could make a case for this guy being the most valuable player, couldn't you? His on-base percentage, high, top five RBIs, number one hitter. He's knocked, he's knocked 14 home runs. I don't think he's going to get many votes, but he's certainly up there in all the big categories in the offensive department. He is probably the best, least known player in the American League. And he's won a batting title. But tonight, that man, this is his stage. 16 strikeouts, six straight. Just three hits allowed, two infield hits to Domingo Sodeno. The other was a solid line drive off the bat of Ed Spray. So he's had, as Randy Johnson, magical stuff tonight. And his teammates gave him just enough of a cushion. Two balls and a strike from Danny Cox to Edgar Martinez. High pop. He might hit the gondola. And it's 
straight away a center field back as such luck Gonzalez makes the catch and there is out number two well next Saturday on ABC's wild world of sports cycling's premier event rolls on as the Tour de France and here's its dramatic conclusion we'll also take an inside look at the career of Iron Mike Tyson as he prepares to re-enter the ring plus the other the heavyweights take the stage at the world weightlifting championships that's all next Saturday at 4 30 3 30 central here on ABC Two outs, bases empty in the eighth for Tino Martinez. An 0-3 ball game. He has walked. He has scored one of the three Mariner runs in the ball game. And outside, 1-0. Major League record, in case you forgot, for strikeouts of the game is 20 by Roger Clemens. Ironically enough, against the Seattle Mariners. Stairs to Tino. And three and oh. Welcome those of you watching down in the City of Angels to the King Dome in Seattle. I'm Chip Carey along with Buck Martinez. The Mariners lead Toronto three to nothing. The story of the night is the big unit. Randy Johnson has struck out 16 Toronto Blue Jays tonight. He's retired the last six men in a row via the strikeout. He has set a new season high for punch outs with that total. Tino Martinez sends a high drive to straightaway center to run right. We put back his back pocket. He's there. And the side is retired. Well, the big unit, a chance for 19 strikeouts, a chance to tie a Mariner record with seven consecutive. We'll see if he can do it and finish off Toronto here in the ninth inning. Ninth inning in Seattle. The Mariners lead the Blue Jays 3 to nothing. Randy Johnson with 16 strikeouts, six in a row, faces the only man not to strike out in the game. Paul Molitor stands in. He is 0 for 2 with a walk. The big unit could tie a Mariner franchise record if he could strike Molitor out here. And he starts him off with a breaking ball that missed high, I guess. One ball, no strikes. Molitor had a big game last night, four hits, including three doubles. But tonight, Johnson has been overpowering. Foul tipped into the glove of Dan Wilson, one and one. Chip, he has really pitched tonight. He has used that slider very effectively in the second half of the ball game. Didn't use it much early. Just went basically with the fastball. Fouled away, one and two. Again, Randy Johnson, his previous, uh, previous best this season was 15 strikeouts. He's got 16 now. His career high is 18. That came in 1992 against the Texas Rangers. One and two to Molitor. Back again. Look out, folks. That was a rifle shot over the Blue Jays' dugout. Well, plenty of souvenirs tonight down both foul oh, lines man. with Randy Johnson. I tell you, that group of fans over the Blue Jays' dugout has had plenty. Randy Johnson, incidentally, as well. Tonight, if he gets two more strikeouts, he would reach the 1,500 strikeout plateau. The one-two. Tap toward third. Flowers, the backhand stab. Oh, throw across in time for out number one. So one out in the ninth inning. Baseball night in America is brought to you by Calcium Rich Tums. Tums helps wipe out heartburn and gives you calcium. By Lexus Luxury Automobiles, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. And by Texaco, clean system free gasolines. Buck Martinez, Chip Carey from the Kingdom in Seattle. Robbie Alomar the hitter. And a strike on the outside corner 0-1. So the unit can't tie the Langston record, but he still can finish with 18 punch outs. Bob foul back, it's 0-2. Well, it's been a great example of a guy just taking charge of the ball game. After the fifth inning, when his offense had that one-run lead, scored two runs, he really turned it on. Alomar protecting the plate. He's been punched out twice, the 0-2 pitch. Fastball way outside. Dan Wilson. Johnson misses outside. That left arm gets about an inch too longer. He's got to go to the tailor the next morning. One ball, two strikes. Chopper towards short. 
Soho up. The throw across. There's out number two. So Andy Johnson one out away from his fourth complete game and second shutout and his tenth win of the year. Again, no Mariner pitcher has ever won 20 games. Randy, in game number 72 of a 144-game schedule, would be halfway to that milestone with a win here tonight. Well, the crowd felt that it was going to be a special night when Johnson went down to the bullpen at 7.30 to warm up. They all gave him a nice round of applause. Joe Carter swings and misses 0-1. They had a sense that it was going to be Randy Johnson's night. They were also acknowledging his start in the All-Star game. This being his first start after that trip to Arlington. And now the big crowd of 36,000 and 37 wants the big unit to finish with a flourish. 16 strikeouts. A masterful performance. He's ready. The 2 High pop. Will it stay in play? Tino Martinez and Dan Wilson run out of room. Over by the Toronto dugout. And Carter stays alive. Lou Pinella. And the ace in the hole. Randy Johnson tonight. Mariners, three games under 500, are 14 and 2, and Randy Johnson takes them out. That is the Cy Young statistic. Nothing and two again to Kyle. Oh, and inside. One and two. Well, with the win tonight, they will get back to within two games of 500 they'll actually gain a half a game on the California Angels who got rained out tonight. One, two. I pop straight away center field. Luis Soho drifts back. He's caught off by Joey Cora and the Mariners win the game. Well Randy couldn't finish him off with the strikeout but that does not matter. 16 strikeouts in the Toronto Blue Jays on three hits. He was absolutely brilliant. And Lou Pinella's ball club, as Buck mentioned, just two games under 500 now with a three to nothing win. So three nothing. The Mariners knock off the Blue Jays of one more game to play in this series. And I'll tell you what, Buck. The more you watch Randy Johnson pitch, the more you really have to appreciate this guy's not just a thrower. He can really pitch a ball game. In fact, with 16 strikeouts, Randy Johnson will be tonight's Chevrolet player of the game. The left-handed hurler for the Mariners will contribute a total, along with the folks at Chevrolet, a total of $50,000 to the Boys and Girls Clubs of America in the names of all the players of the game for the 1995 Major League Baseball season. He was outstanding. Boy, he was in command all night long. The only base hit that reached the outfield was the base hit that Ed Sprague collected off of him back in the fifth inning. The two infield hits, and Randy Johnson was totally dominant tonight. Just two walks to go along with his 16 strikeouts, and he held the Blue Jays to three hits. Yeah, and Randy's last two starts, 29 strikeouts, two walks. And the Mariners win the game 3 to nothing. We'll have more from the Kingdome right after this.